All right, let's talk about uh, another absolute value problem, uh, an equation here with two absolute value problems in it. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit different than the other video I did. The other video I did, it was just two absolute value uh, statements being equivalent to each other. But what I did here on this one was I said, okay, I have this absolute value of 4x plus 3 is equivalent to the absolute value of 2x minus 5, and then I add 2 to that. So essentially, being that these are equations, there either has to be an answer, uh, all real numbers, or no solution. So let's talk about uh, thinking about what our answers are. So again, we follow this uh, idea of the absolute value of some expression being equivalent to another expression. And again, uh, you can't get held up on the fact that I have an absolute value of two absolute values. So the way I'm first going to start this problem is I'm going to utilize this that we have that n, whatever my expression is, is equal to whatever the expression is, okay? And then I have n is equivalent to the opposite of whatever that expression is. So we'll start this one off with saying that, okay, that 4x plus 3 is equivalent to the absolute value of 2x minus 5 plus 2. So that whole expression here is my big. Okay, and then this absolute value, whatever's inside, this is now my n. And then I have the other one over here, that 4x plus 3 is equivalent to, now I've got to take the opposite of all that. So there's two ways you can show this. You can put all this stuff in parentheses and put a negative one there and distribute through, or you can just realize that whatever you have in here is just going to be the opposite sign of. Now you have to be careful about the absolute value because it is a, a uh, quantity-bearing uh, value. So... I would put the opposite of the absolute value of 2x minus 5, but if I take the opposite of positive 2, I then get negative 2. So that's the way you can think of that. Okay, so now you have to remember that when I create my new problems here, there's still an absolute value, and I can't go through and solve these things. So what I need to do is now I need to set up another equation that says the absolute value is equivalent to some, to some number. So let's go ahead and do that. So this one I'm going to solve for the absolute value of 2x minus 5, so I subtract 2 from both sides. Subtract 2, and I'm left with 4x plus 1 equals 2x minus 5, the absolute value of, okay? And over here, okay, this one's a little bit more work, all right? I'm going to do plus 2, uh, plus 2, and I'm left with 4x plus 5 is equivalent to the opposite of the absolute value of 2x minus 5, okay? So to continue solving for this absolute value, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1. So if I divide by negative 1, and I divide everything over here by negative 1, I'm left with the new statement of negative 4x minus 5, okay, is equivalent to the absolute value of 2x minus 5. All right, so now that I have these statements, okay, I've now got my problem set up where I have an absolute value equivalent to some expression. And I have an absolute value equivalent to some expression. So now that I've added more into this, okay, it's just more work. It's more steps. So and the only way I can really make these problems harder is just to create more algebraic steps. So this is now my n, and this is now my b. So to continue on with this one, all right, I'm going to get 2x minus 5 is equivalent to 4x plus 1, so again, it's just the expression as it is, or I get 2x minus 5 is equivalent to, now the opposite of this. So I can write the, the parentheses and multiply everything by negative 1, then go through the step, but I'm going to go ahead and just do that step prior. So I take the opposite of everything here. So the opposite of 4x is negative 4x, and the opposite of positive 1 is negative 1. So now I've created two new statements. Over here, I'm going to do the same exact thing, Okay. So I'm going to say that 2x minus 5, so I'm just going to record my equations over here, by the way. So I get 2x minus 5 is equivalent to uh, negative 4x minus 5. Okay, so this is now my n and this is now my b. And then I get 2x minus 5 is equivalent to the opposite of this. So the opposite of uh, negative 4x is positive 4x, and the opposite of negative 5 is positive 5. Okay, so what I now have here are my four equations. So I hope you don't mind, but at this point I need to erase some work so I can fit it in the screenshot here. But anyhow, okay, we take a look at this and we go through it all, all the work. So, 
to show the work here, I now have my four problems, which is this is problem number one, problem number two, problem number three, problem number four. Okay? So let me erase this work here so I have some space. All right. So now that I've created my four problems, I'm going to go through and solve them, and I'm going to record my solutions over here. I'm going to say these are my x is equal to. All right, so the work for the first one. So I get 2x minus 5 is equivalent to 4x plus 1. So I'm going to go ahead and do these steps kind of quickly and kind of all together. But for this one, I can do minus 4x on both sides, and at the same time, I can move the, the, the constants as well, so plus 5 plus 5. And what I get here is negative 2x is equivalent to positive 6. So I get x equals, when I divide both sides by negative 2, I get negative 3. So I have one solution for my first problem, which x is equivalent to negative 3. Alright? Moving on to the second one. So this was equation number 1. Alright? x equals negative 3. Problem number 2, I had 2x minus 5 equals negative 4x minus 1. All right, so to continue this problem up, let me write that a little bigger. 2x minus 5 equals negative 4x minus 1. So to continue this problem, okay, I'm going to add 4x to both sides. Add 4x. And at the same time, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do the plus 5. So I'm going to move my constants all at the same time. So I get 2x and 4x equals 6x which is equivalent to, so the 4x minus the plus the 4x, and these cancel out, I get negative 1 plus 5 is uh, positive 4, so I divide both sides by x, and I get x is equivalent to, by, I mean by 6, and I get x equivalent to 2 thirds. Why? Because 4 divided by 6 is 2 thirds. So another solution I have, I'm just going to write a common notation, is 2 thirds. So that was equation number 2. I'm now going to move on to equation number three. So equation number three says 2x minus 5 is equivalent to negative 4x minus 5. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move my 4 and my 5 over, so plus 4x, okay, plus 4x. I'm going to move this constant over because I'm bringing the variable this way, so plus 5, plus 5, all right. So 2 and 4 make 6x. Negative 5 and 5, so this side all cancels to make 0, and you have to record that 0. So now I get x, really, divide by 6, divide by 6, you get x equals 0. So another solution I have is 0, so I'm going to go find my last solution. So this is equation number 3. Equation number 4 is the 2x minus 5 equals 4x plus 5. So the 2x minus 5 equals 4x plus 5. So now that I have that, I'm going to go through and do this problem. So I minus 4x, minus 4x, plus 5, plus 5. And what I get left with in this case is negative 2x equals positive 10. Divide both sides by negative 2, and you get left with x equals negative 5. So I've created four solutions here, which is negative 5. Now, the important thing is, is now that I've created the solutions... All right, you have to check to make sure none of them are extraneous roots. Meaning, if I plug these values back into my equation, is it going to make sense? So let's go ahead and check that. All right, so there's my work. So let's check my work here. So right now I'm going to plug the first one. So the absolute value of 4 times negative 3 plus 3, I'm going to say is equivalent to the absolute value of 2 times negative 3 minus 5 plus 2. Okay, so let's see if this works. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Negative 12 plus 3 is negative 9. So the absolute value of negative 9 is that equivalent to 2 times negative 3, which is negative 6. Negative 6 minus 5 is negative 11. Is that equivalent to the absolute value of negative 11 plus 2? Imagine if these absolute value signs were here for a second. I would have negative 9 equals negative 11 plus 2, which equals the negative 9, right? But the problem here is that I have absolute value. So that's where when we, I'm going to show you an answer here that this is 9, and this one is 11 plus 2. 
So what I get there is 9 equals 13. Does 9 equal 13? No. Since 9 does not equal 13, we also say that this is not a, uh, a root or a, a, a solution. So that one goes, go that one's gone. Okay, so that one doesn't make sense, and it's an extraneous solution. All right, so now I have 9 equals 13. Let's go back and check some more. All right, so we found that one doesn't work. So let's go back and try 2 thirds. So absolute value of 2 thirds. So 4 times 2 thirds, instead of me writing it out now, 4 times 2 thirds is 8 thirds. Okay, 8 thirds plus 3. Now 3 and thirds is 9, so not 8 and 9 makes 17. So this is 17 thirds. Okay, the absolute value of 17 thirds equals, okay, the absolute value, 2 times 2 thirds is 4 thirds. Five, okay, so I'll only write this one out. Four thirds. Okay, five and thirds is negative fifteen. So I get negative fifteen over three. All right, and I'm still adding two on the outside. So I now have the absolute value of seventeen over three, which is just seventeen over three, is equivalent to. So four minus fifteen is negative eleven. So this is the absolute value of negative eleven over three plus two. So now I have the absolute value of negative 11 over 3. So I get 17 over 3 equals 11 over 3 plus 2 and thirds is 6 over 3. So now I'm going to write that. And lo and behold, what I get is 17 over 3 equals 17 over 3, which means that, yes, 2 thirds worked. So that's one of them. Let's check another. Let's check 0. All right, plugging 0 in. 4 times 0 is 0. So absolute value of 0 plus 3 is positive 3. So on this side I get positive 3. 2 times 0 is 0. Negative 5 and 0 makes negative 5. So the absolute value of negative 5 is 5. Well, 5 plus 2 does not equal 3. So 0 does not work. All right? On to negative 5. Negative 5. 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. So negative 20 plus 3 is the absolute value of negative 17, which is positive 17. So moving on over to this one. So now I have 2 times negative 5, and 2 times negative 5 is going to give me negative 10. Negative 10 minus 5 is negative 15 plus 2. The absolute value of negative 15 is positive 15, so 15 plus 2 is 17. So what I have now is 17 equals 17, which means negative 5 is my solution. So the important thing to wrap up and remember about all of this is that it, just because you create the solutions mathematically, you need to go back for these types of problems and check, do they work? Because we took away the absolute value that sometimes we create uh, extraneous solutions. So I hope that helps for uh, showing you the work and going through it.